shall do presenting elementary probability two. Happy listening. Well, I intend to start off, start off with the formula. The formula is the generalized formula for all the probabilities we've been talking about. We talked about in uh, elementary probability one. Well, this formula, it is this. It's obtained through the cardinality generalized formula, this. This generalized cardinality formula was presented in set three, slide three, as a way of even correcting. When I was presenting slide three, I had a slip of tone. I was discussing number system, specifically naturals. Then I kept seeing rational, rational. This is for this people tone. Sorry. Now, this formula was presented in set three, slide three. And to come here, we merely we merely divide throughout this formula by the cardinality of the universal set. And from this, we can obtain these ones. And you try writing out that for the five events. Conditional probability. Let, them, let A and B be events such so that probability of B is not equal to zero. Then probability of A given B is equal to probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B. An example is when you toss a fair coin three times. Let A be the first the event that the first toss is a head, and B be the event that two or more heads are obtained. Then you can easily calculate probability of A given B. From listing, which we discussed in uh, elementary probability one and set theory, you would have known that the cardinality of the sample space is eight. How? When a coin is turns one, the cardinality of the sample space is two. But if the toss is repeated thrice, that is two raised to power three, as such it is equal to eight. Now, these ones will be obtained through listing. So if you are armed with this to get this uh, uh, probability is easy, you merely apply the formula and it will be two third. And exercise is just for is here for you. You do it at your leisure. Now the chain rule applies here. Probability of A, intersection B, intersection C, probability of V times probability of B, given that A has occurred. Probability of times probability of C, even that both A and B have occurred. The chain rule applies. applies. Extension to compound cases. We will say that the AIs form a partition of a sample space S if they unite to form S. And no pair, no pair of them uh, are not disjoint. I mean, any pair you take are mutually exclusive. Okay, theorem. Let B1, B2, I mean, the B is from the partition of the sample space S. Then for any event A, probability of A will be sum of probability of A given B sub K times probability of B sub K. We have this example there. For your, I mean, to buttress that. And it's self explanatory. Please read through it at your leisure. That's the solution. To say here that the tree diagram is also available for solving this problem. To either we use to solve it using this, I mean, read through this and try using the tree diagram. You see, you are about the same answer. Base theorem. 
Let B I form a partition in some space S. Then for any event A, probability of B sub K given A is equal to probability of A given B sub K and probability of B sub K over summation of probability of A given sub B sub I, probability of B sub I. I and K are naturals. You actually sum over them. But the numerator here is like probability of A intersection B sub K. And here is an example to buttress that. Now, after the solution, we talked about independent events. Any two events, A and B, are said to be independent if probability of A given B is the same as probability of A. I mean, probability of A given B does not actually give anything different from probability of B. Consequently, probability of A intersection B will now be probability of A times probability of B, multiplication rule, multiplication rule. Generally, for any event AIs, if you have a situation in which probability of A1 does I mean, intersection A2 dot dot dot, intersection AN is equal to probability of A1 times probability of A2 dot 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 times probability of AN. Then you say the multiplication rule is satisfied as such. The AIs are independent. I have an example here, but I have to talk about this example. An appliance has four components, A, B, C, D each having probability of P of breaking down. Component probability that the appliance breaks down if the components are connected in series or parallel. Okay, if the components are connected in series, then the, component, the appliance will break down if the component A breaks down or B breaks down or C breaks down or D breaks down. And that is probability of a union B, union C, union D. Well, if we are not sure, if we don't know, or we are not told that the A, B, C, D are independent, we'll have had to go back to the formula, the one I started with, in order to find the probability of A union B union C union D. But the fact that they are independent will avail us with this other method. We will merely apply the De Morgan's rule, De Morgan's laws. You see, all the union, with the De Morgan's laws, the union becomes intersection and the sets are all uh, events becomes their complement. You see, that's why through the Morgans you arrive here. For you to remove the complementation outside, you say one minus. And since when they are independent, their complements are also independent. This breaks down to this. And to remove the complement over each of them, it will be one minus P1 minus P, mind it, P is one probability that any of them breaks down. And that gives you this. But for the case that they are, in, they are arranged in parallel, it is for the um, appliance to break down, A will have to break down, and B will have to break down, and C will have, B will have to break down. Uh, so it becomes probability of B, and probability of B, and probability of C, and each of them is P, so it's P is to power four. Random variables. That's a numerically valid function divided over a sample space. There are two types, discrete and continuous random variables. Well, we'll start off with discrete, which is over the easiest in the way. And with discrete and random variables, what you associated uh, function is known as probability mass function, P sub K. What are its properties? One, it is usually trapped between zero and one this piece of K, and it sums up to one, that's probably uh, property two. 
But the expectation, expectation of X is obtained through that. Expectation of any function is obtained through this. Put the function ahead of piece of E. The variance, these are the methods through which you obtain the variances in this case. We can obtain the variance through here of this or this. Exercise is the piece of K, this conditional function, is it a PMF? They give reasons. It's not a PMF. Why? It was K at the instance K is equal to minus two. You are going to have minus one over five here. And look at it, the property says it should be between zero and one. But minus k over five is below zero. Yes. Uh, as such, piece of k is not a PMF. That's the reason. Well, the piece of k can be given in this conditional way. It can also be given in the tabulated way, like this. Either way, it doesn't mean Yes, uh, the expectation of the variance will be different. Go straight through this. The, solution, the example here is self-explanatory. Now, continuous random variables. As you say, with the random variable, is a probability, uh, the continuous random variable is a probability density function, as it is probability mass function that we had in the discrete case. And the properties are also very similar. Yeah, you see, the f of x, is trapped between zero and one, and its integral is equal to one. You see, there isn't much difference except that you are going to change the summation symbol to integral symbol. That's all. Change summation symbol to integral symbol. And then the formula for the expectation and the variance remains intact. We have the example here. The example says, find K is such that this is bona fide, a bona fide PDF. When will it be a bona fide PDF? Mind it, this function here will always be in the interval 0, 1. And when you integrate over it, it should be equal to 1. Integrate over it should be equal to 1. So we're going to integrate over this integral now in the interval specified, 0, 2. And we equate it to 1. So we can easily get the k that will make it to be 1. After you do that, and you get it to be two, uh, 3, 8. Put 3, 8 there, and you can now get your expectation and variance easily. Read through this. Self-explanatory. That farthest we tend to go in probability 2. Watch out for probability 3. Buy for now. Thanks for listening. Thanks. Goodbye and uh, God bless.